Right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, let's just begin this session with a word of prayer. So maybe one of us, Divya, if it's okay, can you please lead in prayer? Sure, sure, Pastor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your kindness. Father, Lord, uh, you have uh, brought us this far, Lord, mm, kept us safe throughout the week, Sapa, wherever we are. You have protected us, provided for us, Father Lord, uh, uh, being gracious to us, Lord. You have been forgiving us, loving us, Father. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your compassion upon us. We thank you, Father, for your promises. You are such a faithful God. You're a good, good Father. We invite you up into, uh, into our midst, Lord. Mm especially lord as we are uh, learning this course lord the things that we are learning they're so practical they're so profound we pray father let it bring about a good fruit in each one of our lives Abba. bless um, pastor paul father lord as he is uh, father teaching these uh, foundational truths, Father, as she's uh, sharing his experiences. Abba. We pray that you bless him abundantly, Father. Uh, lord, may you uh, bless him multifold up uh, his family his children uh Abba, we thank you and praise you for each uh, student here we thank you father for your brought us all together may your name be glorified in our midst father lord mm, we commit all these things in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen 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 thank you so much Divya. all right so uh, sorry about last week uh there was a funeral so uh, in the last minute, I just put up the note that uh, we won't have class. Uh, all right, let's get into uh, chapter three. We've been talking about last week, uh, we spoke, uh, we completed chapter two, career plan. Now, this week is, uh, we'll start with chapter three, and it's a very, very, very interesting uh, and very, very important uh, attribute, uh, an important topic that we are discussing and that is right workplace attitudes <clears throat> and now attitude is the way we look at things that uh, so our attitudes influences our choices right our actions our behaviors when we when we think of when we have a, a wrong attitude on something or somebody uh, our actions or our behaviors towards that person or thing changes right now, when we translate this in the workplace, right? Uh, not all work environments are, you know, healthy. Right? There are some places where, you know, uh, everyone enjoy working. There's friendly relationships. There's healthy relations. There's it's supportive. It's exciting. People like to grow. Uh, but then there are very hostile environments, right? Where people want to undercut you, they outsmart you, they uh, gossip, there's office politics, there's drama and all kinds of things, right? But as believers, you and I must develop this ability to maintain good workplace attitudes, right? It is something that we must develop. So regardless of what is happening around us, there may be people who are gossiping, you know, they are, there's office politics, there's you know, all kinds of things that are happening. But you and I can develop this ability to maintain a good attitude, regardless of what's happening around. Right? So attitude is a choice. And that choice is what you and I make. Right? It's, it, it, it is how you decide to look at things. Right, this morning when I was coming, uh, you know, I was dropping my kids to school, and uh, we, I, I usually drop them very early in the morning, so you know, to be avoid all the traffic. But today there was a little bit of traffic, and I thought to myself, you know, uh, you know, uh, I left early because I wanted to avoid the traffic. And uh, and sometimes we may, you know, it may these these small things can really divert our attention or cause something to be stirred in us. Right now, it is important to understand that you and I decide how to react. Right, <clears throat> there may be people who are you know, juniors in your company, and now they are getting promotions. And we're saying, God, what is it that I didn't do? And and we may feel down, we may feel neglected, 
uh, but remember, our attitude is contagious, right? So uh, we can choose to do what is right, and right? we can choose to, you know, live with right attitudes. Let me give you this example, right? Uh, I remember early two thousand and ten. Uh, I, I wanted to, you know, serve in the church. Now, my idea of serving in the church was to stand in the pulpit and preach or lead the worship. That was my idea of uh, serving in the church. But, you know, initially, I got the most menial tasks, right? Uh, I think I've shared this many a times, but, it, you know, I would be grumbling and wiping those chairs. and uh, I have to come early morning just to arrange chairs. Many times I would crumble. I said, God, this is not what I want to do. I don't want to preach your word. I don't want to lead the worship. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be on the stage. Here I am, setting up chairs, wrapping those chairs, and then uh, make sure that you know, the tea is uh, reaching on time. So menial tasks. But all inside me, I was like, well, when can I preach? When can I do? But after a couple of uh, months, I stopped serving. I said, no, I can't do this. This is not what God's called me for. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit, right? And He brought that correction. And I realized that it is how we look at things, we decide. So whether I'm serving for people to see me, or whether I'm serving with an attitude of, you know, I'm serving God. It doesn't matter what people's think what people say whether people whether i'm recognized or not i'm serving god and so our attitude almost always determines our altitude and then it's a very very common saying right let's read daniel chapter 6 and verse 3. then this daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Look at this. I like that word, distinguished. Then Daniel distinguished himself among the others. And isn't that, uh, you know, why? Because he had an excellent spirit. So there were many people working in the, the governor's palace. And uh, there were satraps, there were governors, there were in the king's palace. But there was something different about Daniel. He distinguished himself. So, for example, all of them stood there. There was, they were probably wearing the same uniform, or you know, they were wearing the same kind of attire, doing the same kind of things. But there was something different in Daniel. There was a spirit of excellence in him. Now, Daniel served three governments, right? So that uh, we know that the Babylonians, uh, the Medes, and the Persians. All three governments he he served. Here's the interesting part. Uh, you know, Daniel six talks about the uh, you know when when the Persians come in, they wanted to get rid of Daniel. They are looking at every opportunity. How do we get rid of this guy? Because uh, every king that's coming is you know honoring Daniel. <clears throat> Maybe the new you know when when. Uh, the, Persian king comes in, there, there's a verse, I forget the verse, but it says, uh, we heard about you and how you have uh, you know, uh, you know, governed this whole nation of Babylon. So you continue to be the governor. And you heard the spirit of excellence. What is, what is the important lesson that we can learn here? People may be trying to get you out. People may try to belittle you, try to use all kinds of devious methods to get you out and get into a higher position. Remember, your, our grace, our gifts, our skills at the workplace can set us apart from others. They really can. It can open doors. It can get the attention of superiors. Right? It really can do that. Right? People will want you in your team. Now that's a good feeling, right? Imagine, you know, they say, I want this person in my team. Right? I want him or her because they can do this. Right? Uh, Proverbs 
1513 says, a cheerful heart brings a smile to your face. A sad heart makes it hard to get through the day. I remember this many, many years back. I was I was 16 or 17 years old. I didn't want to join a degree immediately. I wanted a break. So what was my strength? I said, OK, I, I, I can talk English. So I will join a call center. Uh, I'm not saying any one of us must do this. It's just that I wanted a break. I didn't want to study. But here's what happened. Right? Uh, I joined this call center, just a regular call center, in the inbound call center. People from America would call. And my brother was working in that same company. And he, he used to tell me, you know what, I've taken calls for many years. It's not going to be easy. But if you do well, this company will really lift you up. They will really honor you because they did that to me. And so use your skills of English. So he would always tell me that. And so we worked in the same company, same floor also, uh, my elder brother. So I would come to this, you know, I finished my training. I hit the floor. We would put on, you know, put on our headsets and everyone was like, you know, oh man, what am I going to talk to these uh, Americans? What if I don't understand their accent? And there were so many things, right? Uh, even I was a little bit, you know, uh, fearful. Uh, but I remember one thing. So my brother said to me, you, one, one of your strengths is your English. We communicate at home in English, and that's how. That's, so he told me this: use that as your strength. Don't be. See, remember, they can't see you, uh, but they can hear you. They know. Uh, they will understand your the way you speak. So use that as your strength. And I did. I remember saying, you know, I would be even if I don't know the answer, I would be extremely confident. You know, it was all about credit cards. I say, what about this? What about this? I say, hey, don't worry, don't worry. I'll I'll get back to you with the answer. You know, just. Uh, uh, just be confident in what I'm doing. And in six months, six months, uh, I remember I got a promotion. I was into quality. Quality was basically listening to other people's call calls and giving them feedback on how you can improve your call. So I was in, the, in this process of quality at six months. Right? And, and I thank God for what my brother told me. And over time, I, I worked there just for two years. But in, in two years, I ended up being the team leader. And it was not something to boast about. But what I basically did was I used my strengths. Uh, and I whatever I did, my, my attitude towards the work was like, hey, I want to do something good. Right? Of course, there were days when I was like, oh, man, I have to take calls for seven hours. It's tiring. And you say the same thing. Oh, you know, the same call flow. It is tiring. But our attitude was, you know, we need to change it. Said, okay, if I have to see myself becoming better, growing bigger, growing, getting, you know, growing up the ladder, I need to look at the positives of what I'm doing. But this is just an example. I'm sure Daniel did that. I'm sure Daniel would have always had his heart set to Jerusalem. When can I go back? But that didn't make him sulk and sit in one place. Where he was, he was excellent in his spirit. Right? So our attitude to things really matters. Right? Next point, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whether you whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Motivation. Right? Motivation is important. Our motivation is what drives us, right? what inspires us, what stimulates us, what keeps us going. If there is no motivation, when the tough times come and suddenly you will be at the seas and there's you know, just raging seas coming at you, or you may just be in front of a mountain and looking at, it, looking at that mountain and saying, hey, how am I going to get through this? We, If there's no motivation, we're going to give up. Right? Now, in the workplace, uh, an organization will definitely give professionals incentives, right? Like, um, you know, uh, they have medical benefits, they have uh, other benefits that are available. But, oh, you know, incentives and, uh, you know, uh, pay raise and all of those things, um, bonuses, all that is good. But our work 
must not be motivated for that. Our motivation must be, God, what I'm doing, I want to glorify you. And of course, we have the practical motivations like, you know, I want to become a team leader, I want to become a manager. But why do we want to become that? Yes, we want to see, you know, grow, growth in our lives and our professional career. But Lord, I want to do this to glorify your name. If you raise me up, if you make me the team leader, if you make me the manager or the you know the assistant director, and I will glorify your name. I will make sure that what I do, you know, there may be corruption when you go up the ladder. There may be uh, you know divisive methods that people use, but I will make sure that I will use the right methods. I will honor your name, and, and that's when you know we are doing all for the glory of God. Uh, you and I are empowered to carry his name. And when we carry his name, here's the wonderful part. We represent him and his spirit, spirit of God gives us the wisdom, gives us excellence, right? Gives us virtue, gives us greatness, right? Look at Nehemiah. I always, I always you know, uh, I'm in awe of what happened in the book of Nehemiah. You know, they all... They're just going before the king uh, and, and you know, uh, telling him that I want to do this. You know, during those days, now, I mean, we can talk about it very easily, but during those days, you can't just go before the king and talk whatever you want to because they could just say, get rid of this person. The king could just say, get rid of him. Uh, he could be put to death. Even so, if you look at Esther, Esther, she, she prayed and she said, well, I'm going to go before the king. Why? Even though she was the wife of the king, uh, there was so much of fear, there was so much of reverence because they have the power. But when the Spirit of God is upon us, He gives us the wisdom, He gives us excellence, our, we, the virtue that we need, right? And He and we begin to uh, you know glorify His name. So there'll be times you may have to go the extra mile, you may have to do overtime, right? Uh, I remember. I was just sharing about the, uh, the the company that I worked with. Now there used to be these times when we would have contests, right? Global contests. So all across the world, the contests would happen, and they said anybody can work overtime, how many hours, um, and it's it's you know. So I remember there were times, uh, you know, the the company actually hired beds, mattresses, right? And they would take those mattresses. We had a few empty conference halls. They put those mattresses there. And they said, if you want to rest for two, three hours, come back and take calls, you can do that. It was so serious. Though many, many times we would sleep for you know, a couple of hours, put the alarm on our phone, wake up, go back, take calls. And we would do 16, 18 hours of calls. Right? Um, we just go for our refreshments, maybe 10 minutes, rush back in. Why? Because we are motivated to win those contests. Not because of global contests all across the world. And there were many contests that we won. Right? Uh, why? Because we are motivated with something. Normally, we wouldn't do it. Uh, but that, that season, we did it. But here's the thing. When we are motivated, when we do things for the glory of God, whatever we do, must be, you know, it must be motivated from Him. There will be times when people will be rude, people will be very discourteous, they may, they may belittle you. It's okay. It's okay. You can just serve them with a smile. Right? Uh, they may, you know, especially if you're working and uh, you know, and they say, you know what, you are like this, you do this, you you didn't do this, or, or you know, they may belittle you. Uh, be very rude to you. Stay calm under pressure. And that comes from the wisdom of God, right? Uh, stay calm under pressure. Uh, now, this is not only in the workplace, but even in ministry. And sometimes in ministry, we have so many things that are happening at one time. You know, this is happening. There are families going through this. You, all the, you know, all all of them are coming and sharing with you. And there's pressure. Just stay calm under pressure. 
Right? Keep your ambition kingdom focused. Right? Uh, as I keep teaching, uh, feel free to post your questions and you can either unmute and ask your questions also. Right? Uh, feel free to stop me, uh, no problem. Right? Keep your ambition kingdom focused. I love this. Matthew chapter 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added to you. <clears throat> so first things first. Top priority. Number one is to seek first the kingdom of God. And then all the other things shall be added unto us. Now, the mistake, the mistake that many of them make nowadays is they seek first the kingdom of God, so I'll sit at home. 121 days of prayer, 40 days of prayer, and God will provide for me. And now that we know that's not right, that's not the right attitude God wants us to know. Now I've actually heard of people saying, you know, I will pray, just like how God sent the ravens to feed Elijah. God will send the right people to feed me. I remember telling these people, God's not going to send anybody to feed you. You because you are 25 or 26 years old, you better get up, go get a job, work, and feed yourself. Right? Uh, and he was really offended then. He said, no, How can you say that? You're not trusting God because we trust God. But that's not how God works. Right? God told Elijah to go up the mountain. There was a reason for that. And God didn't, uh, but when you look at the New Testament, when you look at Apostle Paul, he was doing. I think the most ministry ever, and he was doing. You know, he was a tent maker, right? And and so, our ambition must be to glorify God first, the kingdom of God, right? That's the focus. We have our dreams, we have our goals, we have our pursuits, what we want to become professionally in ministry, everything. But we invite God into it first, right? Always remember, life is more. Than just making money. Proverbs eleven twenty eight, he who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. Right now, we must remember that money is important, but money is not everything in life. Right. Uh, yeah, there's a question from Divya. How can we serve with a smile even when others are unkind? Maybe a theologically incorrect question, but practically difficult to follow. Yes, yes, Divya, it, it is it is very practically difficult to follow. Right? Uh, now, for example, you know, working in the call center, you have these irate customers. The call just comes in, you, you know, you're saying, the customer says, hey, what is wrong with your company? You know what, you've been charging me for this. Uh, I want to speak to your manager. And uh, yeah, there are times things that happen. And, uh, you know, uh, but there's something called as de-escalation. I'm sure you would have heard of it. Uh, just being calm under pressure, having that composure. Right? Now, it, it comes over experience. And it comes over, you know, just by asking the Holy Spirit to give you to be wise, right? So many a times, what I do is when I feel too much pressure, too much stress uh, uh, inside of me, what I do is I just, I just stop, and I, I say, God, help me, give me the wisdom. There will be times when God will ask you to just stay quiet. There will be times God will ask you to, you know lead you to say something or he may bring to remembrance and then he also we also use our wisdom that we've gained over experience right um so practically it is very difficult you know when somebody is just shouting at you um best thing to do is try to calm them down just by kind words you know the book of proverbs says a kind words kind words puts off wrath right Somebody shouting at you or just so upset with you. And if you are just giving kind words, it is or nine out of ten times automatically the other person just calms down. Right. Now it's biblical, but it's also uh, you know, it's also something that is I would say common, commonly done nowadays. 
And so if somebody is shouting at you or if somebody is really stressed out, uh, understand what they're going through. Maybe kind words is something that will really help at that time. And if you keep you know, uh, being very kind, very soft, and if they are still you know, shouting and aggressive, just try to, you know, uh, it's very easy for us to snap and say, hey, I've been kind to you for the last five minutes, but you've been just shouting at me. Uh, but you can, we, we just need to like, you know, tell ourselves, okay, so help me, you know, give me the wisdom to handle it. Yes, but as you say, you know, it is it is practically very difficult, but we can do it. We can do it with the help of the Holy Spirit, right? Right, so yes, life is more than just making money. Right, uh, there are intangibles. Right, there's meaningful relationships. There's serving people. There's this is joy of accomplishment. Right, uh, fulfilling a purpose in life. Sometimes it's not always money. Right, uh, you know. Uh, I sometimes uh, I ask my mother uh, at times. You know, are you happy? Have you happy with what you have done? And she's she always tells me I'm satisfied with my life because I spent 45 years teaching uh, children. 45 years as a teacher. She says I'm satisfied. Uh, she keeps saying, you know, we didn't have much. We didn't earn much. You know, we didn't have big luxuries in life. But I was so con I'm so content. I'm so, I was so fulfilled. And I remember she was saying, you know, I wouldn't mind doing it all over again. Uh, that's a contentment, right? This is more than the money. More, I mean, teachers, uh, primary teachers, they don't really get much, but there was this sense of I've served people, I've served the government, I've served children. Uh, you know, this this fulfilling uh, feeling in life is more than you know, always thinking about money. Remember, God is a master, and money is your slave, right? So. You serve God and you use the money that God gives you. What when, when does it go wrong? When we keep thinking about money. Right? We, uh, our mind, we wake up, we're thinking about money. It's afternoon, we're thinking about money. Night, we're thinking about money. Then there's something wrong. We need to check our heart attitude. Now, it's sad to say that this has even crept into the ministry. Right, where, remember this many years ago, uh, uh, I went for a meeting. Right? Maybe I think it was 2019. We were in Mangalore. We went for I went for a meeting because every every time as pastors we only you know keep sharing you know, sharing the word and ministering to people. So I just wanted to hear a sermon. Uh, so I went and after the whole meeting, I just went to the pastor uh, who was preached and I I said. Can you pray for me when I'm in ministry? I didn't tell him I'm a pastor and all of that. He said, hey, just pray for me, I'm in the ministry. Uh, pray that God gives me the strength, the wisdom, uh, and for the things ahead. Just a simple prayer. I, I was surprised at what he said. He said, yeah, I'll give you, I'll, I'll pray for you, I'll give you a prophetic word, then you can go and put your offering there. Uh, it didn't strike me at first. Uh, but then later, uh, you know, as he was talking to me, I realized, and I sensed the Holy Spirit saying, step away. Uh, but it was too late because I already asked him to pray. And I said, see, I don't want any prophetic word. I don't require any prophetic word for now. Um, he definitely, he was offended. Uh, but I said, just pray for me and for my family. Just do a simple prayer. But I knew what he was getting at. Right? Uh, you, you see that his mind, more than serving people or praying for this individual who has come, he said, he, he said, I'll pray. You can go and put your offering in, in, in that box there. Now, I thank God for, you know, the, uh, for reminding me and, you know, just helping me at that moment. But we never know how many people he has done this to. Well, meaning maybe people are coming for prayer who have lost their loved ones, or people their loved ones are in hospitals, children are unwell. We never know how many people he's prayed for and asked for, you know, offering. And I was taken aback. I was really, um, you know, I, I remember praying to God and saying, God, 
never should money be a reason for doing anything, whether in the workplace or in the ministry. God will provide. You have the vision. You have you you and I have the right heart motives. If He has given us the calling, He will also provide for it. He will provide for it. So we don't always think about money. Money is something that God gives us to use, but God is our master, right? Always walk in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Right? What a wonderful words. Better is little with the fear of the Lord. Right? To walk in the fear of the Lord is to walk in reverence, to honor the Lord. That means to be God conscious in everything that we do. Right? Uh, whatever we do, is this something that God would be pleased in? Is this something that God would be uh, you know, pleased if I if I do this or if I don't do this? Uh, will God be glorified? Is it something that will dishonor God's name? Right? Uh, I remember when I was in Bible college, uh, it's a very simple thing, but it, it, it stuck with me, right? Uh, we had the tables there. Uh, 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 you know, we had a lot of tables, and so we had like about 30 or 40, 30 odd students in my batch. And I remember some of the students would write on the on the table. And I would be so upset. I said, why would you write on the table? So I tell them, uh, like you know, why would you do that? It's not yours. If it's yours, you would you write on the. So, so why would you write? You know, the drawing stars, or drawing some things on the table, and these are these are not toddlers. These are people who are getting ready to be pastors and you know leaders in the church, coloring on the table. Many times I have you know, told them, hey, stop doing that. It's 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 not it's not yours. It's it's God's. What whatever is here is God's. Remember, you know, during those times, these uh, midterm and the uh, uh, exams, you know, they were very strict, you know, so we would have stables set up, we would have these answer papers, question papers given with answer papers, and then the uh, invigilator or the pastor, whoever is invigilating, would, you know, uh, make sure that all of us are doing it the right way. Now, many times, uh, you know, people would say, hey, you know what, I, I, I saw this answer from the book. And for me, it was, uh, you're happy that we're doing this, but you know, we need to have the fear of the Lord. I would rather get no marks than to copy and get a hundred marks. Like it doesn't make sense, right? So when we apply it to the workplace, it should be the same. Because the fear of the Lord, when you have the fear of the Lord, you and I will not, you know, uh, do things in the wrong way, right? Here's the important thing. Train yourself in small things to honor God. This is small things. Right? If you have to log in at 9 o'clock, example looking, okay. log in at 9 o'clock, small thing. Right? One of the things my dad always used to tell me and my brothers was, Monday to Saturday, I don't ask you where you go, what you're doing. You'll go all over the place. I don't stop you. Sunday morning, I want you to be sitting in church five minutes before church starts. So we would be, you know, all grumbling, oh man, Sunday. But we knew Monday to Saturday, you know, he didn't ask us where you go and what you're doing. But we knew Sunday came, we would wake up, whether we are grumbling, whether we liked it or not. We would wake up, get ready, make sure that we were in church five minutes. But we can sleep in church. He, he, it wouldn't matter to him, but he wanted us in church. The right? uh, reason is he wanted to, uh, now I understand, he wanted us to, he wanted to instill the fear of the Lord in us. Right? Do things rightly. Right? Uh, uh, and, and train us. Right? He would always say, you know, my dad would always say, um, how can you make God wait? Can't make God wait. You need to go there earlier and wait for God. 
that it made so much sense you know when you think of it ask yourself does this honor god does this demonstrate reverence to god is it right in the eyes of god and the most powerful verse proverbs 9:10 says fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy one is understanding so start small right start small uh, now this could also be in terms of exercise for your body it could be in the workplace ministry family start small just, 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 it could be something very small but over time you know you're you're instilling this in your children right and in your family as well next one the fruit of the spirit are winning attitudes walk in the spirit now paul writes to the galatians he writes that one thing but the spirit produces love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness humility and self control and there is no law against such things now you and i have the holy spirit i always wonder imagine you know daniel and joseph the holy spirit came and empowered them and left but you and i as believers have the holy spirit always with us and we can walk in the fruit of the spirit right uh, i think in the book of colossians he talks about things that we put on i think it's colossians 2 chapter 2 chapter 3 one of those chapters uh, things that we put on and things that we put off as believers and these are things that we have to do the holy spirit is there but we have to you know take the effort to do the things right the holy spirit brings about a transformation of who we are our character our attitudes our, our entire personality changes because we're walking in the fruit of the holy spirit right so there are nine fruits and nine traits that we can consider love joy being positive being passionate being enthusiastic peace a sense of calmness even when things are you know not going your way um patience uh, endurance commitment uh, maybe we are in the workplace and doing the thing doing the same thing for the past 3 years you feel god why isn't anything happening maybe we must walk in patience wait for the lord right uh kindness gentle word and 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 deed goodness demonstrating generosity benevolence faithfulness being sincere being dependable right? uh, humility uh, you know just being humble not uh, boasting much more about ourselves and self control uh, the ability to you know uh, self govern ourselves to direct our energies and walk in wisdom uh, walk wisely as well right so these are the nine the nine fruit of the holy spirit now with this it's not like okay only those in ministry must have all this we can all we must all walk in these and right? uh now as we do this we continue to grow and i'm not saying that we may not get upset we may not uh, we may not feel weary we may not feel sad or, or you know or get angry we may go through all that but that is the moment you just have to say holy spirit i know you're inside me i know i have the fruit of the holy spirit fill me so if you're uh, if you're feeling restless fill me with your peace a peace that passes all understanding help me not to worry about what what's happening in this workplace or you know groupism uh, uh, and all these things you know these wrong things that are happening office politics help me not worry about that you give me the peace and you will see because the word is going out because you're being empowered by the holy spirit you will see a change right so walking in the spirit is is powerful right? it really changes things in our, in our lives do you work obediently sincerely willingly and cheerfully and uh, you know in bible times there were slaves and masters today there is employees and employers so you got presidents ceos managers team leaders you got that whole hierarchy right so we wouldn't say masters and slaves but we say employers and employees right 
be willing to obey, be willing, be sincere, be wholeheartedly work, right? Uh, work cheerfully, even when you don't feel like, and, uh, uh, you know, put that smile on your face and, you know, just try to do what God has called you to do. And sometimes we have to we have to push ourselves. Sometimes we may have to drag ourselves, right? Uh, but we have to do it. Right? Um, obey means to follow instructions with a yielded heart, staying aligned to what has been asked of you. Being sincere means to do something with genuine interest, even when you are not being watched. We can be sincere when we are watched. But what about when we are not being watched? Especially, uh, now for example, you know, you're working uh, and you know your logout time is 5 p.m. Uh, this is just an example, right? You know, you got a logout at 5 p.m. But everyone have left. And it's just you at office, maybe a few others. And you know that if you log out at 4.30, nobody's going to know and nothing's going to happen. Right? But what are we going to do? It's a choice. We can log out and look, no, nothing. It's not going to be a big problem. They're not going to call you and terminate you. Nothing's going to happen. But when we work sincerely with a willing heart, we know that, hey, this is the number of hours I've been scheduled to work. This is what I have to do. This is what I signed up for. So whether people are watching or not watching, and at 4.30, if it's another half an hour, I go ahead and work for that half an hour. And now, sometimes, you know, the enemy can come. You know, we know his tactics. He he comes with the arguments and reasoning. It's okay. Everyone have gone. It's it's all right. Nobody knows. The managers have gone. Everyone have gone. Half an hour. It's nothing. What can you achieve in half an hour? Not like the company is going to get millions in half an hour. Let's go ahead. You can. You know, so anyways, by the time you go down, get to your vehicle, it's going to be 5 p.m. So it's almost the same. Now, the enemy is good at that. But what do we do? We destroy every argument. We cast down every argument, every reasoning. Right? And then we do what is right in the eyes of God. Being sincere is very, very, very important. Uh, in whatever we're doing, in our family, looking after our children uh, in terms of ministry, workplace, just being sincere. Say, so God, nobody's watching, but you're watching me. And he will reward us for being sincere. But I have plenty of stories that I can share of just, you know, I'm not saying I did it joyfully, right? um, you know, but I was like, God, I'm doing it because you. I know you are watching me and I'm doing it because I want to honor you. Uh, but it's very hard for me, Lord. Please help me. And I've somehow, I, I thank God that He enabled me to do it. Um, I thank God for those, you know, just being sincere. And over time, it has helped me. I personally, it has helped me. And I understand that, hey, I'm not doing it for people, I'm doing it because I honor God. Right? Uh, Philippians 2, 14 and 15, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be innocent and pure as God's perfect children who live in a world of corrupt and sinful people. You must shine among them like stars lighting up the skies. What a powerful verse. Right? You must shine among them like stars lighting up the skies. So do everything without complaining or arguing. Right Now, I'm getting there. Right? It's not like I'm saying, you know, uh, I do everything without complaining. Uh, I, I don't argue, but uh, to tell you the truth, there are times I have complained, right? And I haven't expressed it out. I felt, oh man, why is this happening this way? Uh, but I thank God for His Holy Spirit. You know, in our weakness, He is our strength. Right? We can always go to Him and He enables us. Right? Loyalty is essential. Be faithful. Proverbs 3 3 and 4. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck. Write them on your heart. If you do this, both God and people will be pleased with you. Loyalty and faithfulness. Right? To be loyal simply means to be committed. Right? Uh, to serve the vision 
and purpose of the organization being loyal to a team right especially if you're working in a in a corporate sector you got a team right uh, just go ahead and and build that team right uh, work together in that team right uh, loyalty is not found easily these days right uh, uh, because of many things people tend to uh, you know place personal interests ahead of name and uh, ahead of growth and the well-being of the organization and so yes there are times when you know it doesn't mean when god is giving you a promotion and you move to another company it doesn't mean you're being not being loyal to the company like uh, let's clarify that right so for example you're working in a company for five years god has opened the door to become a senior manager in another company you don't have to feel guilty that here I've been loyal to five five years here. Am I being, uh, you know, am I not being loyal to this company? No, it's just that God has opened another door for you, and God wants you to transition to that other place. But in that remaining, maybe one or two months that you have to work in the company, your attitude is what matters. Right? Are you loyal to the work that you're doing? Now you know that you're going to leave this company and move to another company. You know you got two months time. You know that even if you don't work, you know, it's okay because I already got a job in the other company. A better job, better paying job, better position, everything is better there. But we need to be loyal for these two months. It's very hard, right? Uh, you know you're going to move out, but you know you have to be loyal as well, right? That's what loyalty is, right? Uh, and Jesus narrated the story of that irresponsible manager who uh, in Luke chapter 16 let's look at that Luke 16 10 and 12 says and if sorry whoever is faithful in small matters will be faithful in large ones whoever is dishonest in small matters will be dishonest in large ones if then you have not been faithful in handling worldly wealth how can you be trusted with true wealth and if you have not been faithful with what belongs to someone else who will give you what belongs to you right now in relation to this faithfulness in small matters demonstrates the ability to be faithful in big things right? faithful in small things you'll be able to be faithful in bigger things faithfulness in handling money and so imagine this you know, you know God gets you the uh, you know small amounts right? a small package are you faithful are you able to you know are you serve are you giving to the Lord are you providing for the family it may be very minimal are you providing for the family are you providing are you making sure that the children are meeting their needs faithful in small matters and then eventually God gives us bigger right then Faithfulness in what belongs to someone else, then when the right time comes, you will have your own. You will see that God will bring faithful people. Right? Now, for example, you want to start a ministry, but it's there in your heart, or you want to start your own business, you want it's there in your heart. Uh, but now time has come. You're working for a company, you or you're in the ministry. Now, if I don't work faithfully in the company, what will happen is over time, if I start a company of my own, I will have employees that will not work faithfully for me because I have not done my part of being faithful. If I've not been faithful in the ministry that I'm working under to the pastor or the ministry that is that I'm working in, when I start my own ministry, I may not have people who are faithful. Right? So, we would be rewarded according to what we do, right? We'll just do one more point and we'll close. Be accountable at all times, even when you are not asked for, right? So accountability is very important. This is in terms of uh, you know, resources, time, the tool, uh, people, money, infrastructure, so many things that are available. Um, we need to be accountable. And saying okay 
this is what I have out here comparable for this. And you know, I'm sure in a lot of companies, we have this whole thing of writing uh, reports and sending maybe weekly, monthly, quarterly reports. Uh, but these are reports that are important because what you're doing is you're being accountable for what has been assigned to you. Now, sometimes certain companies may not ask for reports or uh, you know, they may say, okay, just work, right? Especially in a time now that we're working from home, many companies are working from home, uh, just being faithful there, right? Uh, be accountable. So you can always send an email and say, this is what I've done over the past two weeks. This is what I'm going to do in the coming week. Uh, what happens when you're being accountable is that even when you're not asked for it, you're saying, God, I'm honoring you with the work that has been assigned to me. But ultimately, be accountable not only to your boss, but also to God. So God is first things first. You're saying, okay, God, I'm accountable to you. I know that I have to stand and be, uh, you know, give an account of what I'm doing. But I'm, I also want to be accountable to the birth, to who's ahead and, and you know, my boss who is working above me. Uh, being accountable helps us to really uh, set the tone of our work, to know that, hey, either God, I'm being accountable to God, I'm being accountable to my boss. And, and, and that way we will know that we're on the right page. Right, so uh, we'll close today. Uh, so we went a little ahead. Right. Uh, thank you so much for joining, uh, and we'll I'll see you on Wednesday uh, for the third hour. Have a great week. God bless.